Well, let me ask you, man, because you're, you're the brownest guy in this room and probably the, the brownest guy in the genre. When oh, when yeah. someone brings that race shit to you, how does it how does it strike you? That's what I know. They got another. That is the. Uh, have you, uh, you you watch some fights, right? Sure. All right. The when you start just dropping random, you've got nothing but race left. And when you're on yeah. shit like that, I see that as the giant looping exhausting punch. Mm. Like that's what I see. That that is the looping exhausted punch. Where I know that you're yeah. done and you have nothing left in the You time. do you I've always wondered did that spike on you when there was the first kind of like splintering with Warsky Live? Did like the alt right suddenly uh, start pulling that card? Oh, you were this all along and we shouldn't have trusted you and race mixing and blah blah blah. Race maybe. Maybe I I don't know. They they've always known that I've been fucking their white women since I had the chance. So I don't while know. you were gone, they were inflamed. They were very, very inflamed. There were a lot of accusations, uh, you know, because I, I linger around Ralph Retort too. And in the Discord over there, there's a lot of like accusations about <clears throat> your wife and um I have a wife. What? Is it is it is it your wife? What? Is, I don't is know. Van- I, who? Oh, Van- oh, oh yeah. Is that your wife? No, no, no. no. Oh, so no. The, it was being, it was stuff oh, being said along that. <laughs> it was stuff being said along that line of like race mixing, cucking, um, you oh, know, so fuck they, that, they blah blah. Believe very desperately that I can't get every single white woman in pretty much all their lives, <laughs> and and the truth is I can't. I have watched that. I, you know, I've been commentating on this stuff for a few years, and I've watched that audience grind every person including their own that they have touched. Like, you know, there's like six months of, of good times and super chats and they're so paranoid that like six, seven months down the line, I don't care. Ask Venti, ask JF, ask Cantwell, ask Andy. And you have your own personal experiences. They jump to secret Jew. I they, and again, getting called a Jew. I do remember yeah. that. I got called. Uh, failure was getting called a Jew for a while. That was fun. Yeah, myself, the, myself included. When I first came around, Bronx, are you are you Jewish? We heard you're half Jewish, half black. And I'm like, man, I got a big nose, but I'm half Italian, man. Like, <laughs> all right, here's here's something that maybe uh, you can appreciate. I, I again, I don't agree with you on very on, on very much politically, but I will hand you this. I find nothing funnier than a bunch of uh, a bunch of people who are doing the whole. Uh, I'm a white nationalist, and oh, look! Look at all! Look at all the darkies crying about the white man holding them down. Pick yourself up by your bootstraps, kid. Pick yourself up. Meanwhile, they're all gonna go into the fucking discords and cry like bitches. But the Jews are holding us down. What's the oh, di- yeah, What's the difference between a black dude bitching about white people holding them down and you running into a dude? Well, the Jews are holding me down. Yeah, they're white SJWs. They've always been white SJWs. They just take whatever word we have for whatever systematic thing we talk about, and they go, "Yeah, but white." No, I would I would say that everybody is an SJW about something. That's the mm. trick. Yeah, it's yeah. about something, something, whatever you feel passionately about. You're gonna be a fucking SJW about it. You can tell somebody to fuck off. A yeah. uh, great way to a uh, great way to explain it. People will say, "Oh well, uh, this person's not an SJW, but look, they don't get mad about something." Okay. Let that per- for instance, Jim, good example. People say there's nothing Jim would be an SJW about. Let mm-hmm. Jim catch wind that some kids are getting fucked with. You'll see you'll see Jim start getting real high and mighty real fucking quick. Uh yeah, I talked I talked to Medicare on uh, on Ralph Retort uh, after the um was that Portland thing where the, the Antifa punch went down? Mm-hmm. Was it Portland? Yeah. Yeah. That was like uh, two weeks ago. And the guy was surprisingly civilized and we had a pretty we had like an hour back and forth and it was pretty, you know, pedestrian a bit, but Medicare is not all right. Uh, you know, I used to think that he was, um, sympathetic, but I don't, I don't, I don't know if I would necessarily say that now. I'm not sure. You know, I don't think he cares much about it. I think he, he probably cares about it as much as to watch them interact with other people. <laughs> As they've lost their sense of humor, it's become more apparent to because again, like in the last 
since Charlottesville, I feel like the alt right has really sort of departed from humor and gone like we're we're completely, which I predicted, of course, from like a long a while back. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, the, the Proud Boys knocking the shit out of those Antifa. That was a great moment. That well, Proud Boys moment. aren't all Proud Boys aren't alt right, and before that punch, right, R- Rufio to the extent of, of, of punching him down, I would say the right at least. Probably not the alt right, but I'd I'd suggest I, I'd guess the one more see Proud Boy on that sure. side. Yeah, was, yeah, was, he had the damn. Okay, yeah, I was going to make sure you do, you don't want to mislabel Rufio from what I've heard. <laughs> That's something you want to do. <laughs> he he has a I think he has a he has a, a he's a, in a mixed marriage too. Like really? Yeah, him him and Stickman uh, Chapman, Chapman Chapman also was in a mixed uh, marriage. But you never know, man, because fucking Jared Taylor's in a mixed marriage. I think his wife is is Jewish or something, and. See, don't People just shrug it off. All, all right, Hulk. Have you ever seen an example of organized crime actually running a place and it not going to shit? <laughs> I mean, Mexico is is the number one example of it really, really going all the way, right? Yeah, that's a uh, that's way too organized crime. That's when uh, the crime is more organized than anything else in the fucking country. Yeah. Uh, it's miserable. And that's what that's what that's kind of the case in a lot of parts where you're talking about Italy, anywhere where there's peers. The mob basically runs those towns the way that Mexican mafia runs um, the border towns in Mexico. Okay, this this leads into the obvious uh, obvious segue here. Yeah, how would you see communism fixing any of that? Like, you start from there. Like, let's say right now you're in Mexico. Boom, you overtake the fucking government. You put in communism. Do you think that's gonna fix it? Well, you have a socialist coming into power right now, which is like I guess. 10 degrees away from communism. It depends on the kind of communism. I'm not a Maoist. I'm not a third worldist. I'm not a Stalinist. I don't believe in, in, in authoritarian uh, communism and gulags and all that stuff. Um, communism, as I understand it, anarcho-communism is a system that is uh, premised upon voluntary participation. Um, it, it's, it's premised on um, you know people uh, working together without the goal of like cash and it's it's kind of a subsistence lifestyle where like you just kind of have what you need and a little bit of what you want, but like uh, you know you it's should. it's not I'm a cons- not. <laughs> but that's fine. Look, I, I don't I don't get upset when people who've lived under capitalism, myself included, with all the shit that I have in my my home and all the little hobbies and stuff. I get it. It's it's alienating and it's scary and it's. But you, you need to think about well, these capitalists. Really it's scary. I just don't want to live in a third world country. If I wanted to do that, I'd go to Africa and, you know, just live with pretty much fuck all. No, but those people don't have communism down there. The problem in, in, in Africa is that you have hyper, hyper uh, feudalism down there. So that's that's not what communism is. Oh, communism no, no, I'm, just, is I'm, just, I'm just saying it's yeah. like the from my p- position, I'd still be sat there with fuck all. And, you know, just I, I, I'd rather, you know, if I wanted to do that, I could go somewhere to, to live with fuck all. Yeah, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. And I've always wondered, you know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of red, there's a lot of red panic on YouTube. And I've always wondered, like, if people could, if you look at the situation that that a country like Mexico is in, would those people be better off if more people had what they needed than people had what they wanted, like the potential to get more than they needed? You know, that's that's kind of the, the major question of whether communism is 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 you whether you consider communism to be a good system because you are going to generally get more of what you need healthcare clothing medicine in, food i think in it depends theory on how, and how on paper you are but you i mean fuck man if those resources aren't there to fucking begin with how do, how do you build that up through essentially i mean all, all you would be doing is doling out some rations and hoping that you can save enough to trade to get where you need to be and that's a long fucking road that that does that is a real concern and it, it is true that in history um the biggest stumbling block to communism is that the rest of the world is capitalist and they will punish you for See, uh, yeah go ahead as a, as a guy who lives in the uk i'd say something that's quite i'd say it's something that would work within if you were living in a communist society you'd probably have a national health service yeah where basically people put everyone yeah. puts into this that yeah it's the same thing we have the nhs over here it's failing uh, number one and number two because people take advantage of it especially considering you can literally just be an immigrant or any refugee that's not even documented or even legal and you can still get the medical help uh and i find it as a problem i, I actually I, the reason why i'm moving to america is one of the reasons why i'm leaving the us uh, the uk sorry is because i actually can't stand the nhs 
I don't like it. I can't stand the fact that I pay money into this thing consistently. And when I actually do finally need to use the doctor, when I finally need that doctor, I get the shit service that the crackhead next to me in the same bed's having, right? And he's here every fucking day because he's on crack, right? <laughs> he's, he's just off his fucking head. And he's getting, and I'm paying for him as well to be in this bed right now. Whereas if, if it was all down to the fact of me actually paying for a service, I could actually just get it. I, you know, it, it wouldn't be filled up with all these fucking cons. And the NHS has to constantly pay for that. The taxpayers constantly pay for these people who, who don't put back into the system. They take advantage of it because you're constantly going to have those people in society. I've been homeless before. When I was homeless, I never begged. And there was a guy who said to me, hey, let's go begging. I, I, but you can make about 70 pounds a night, apparently, just begging in the middle of Manchester. It's not, not something mm -hmm. I ever wanted to do. My whole thing is to obviously, you know, work your life out, sort it out, get it. You know, you've got, you're, I hit rock bottom. You've just got to sort your shit out. Uh, and I'm not going to go begging on that. I'm going to sort my shit out. There is a system in place to help you get get off the off your ass and you just do it. It just takes persistence. It really is all it takes. And this is the thing that came with, uh, uh, with, with, well, at least me and how I am now. And it's, uh, uh, but when I, when I look back at it, that, to see these people happily taking advantage of this system that they know is in place. They'll use the NHS all fucking day. They'll get drugs all fucking day. They'll get about 70 pounds a day just saying, oh, I'm poor. I'm, 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 I look like shit. Yeah, because you're getting beaten up by your drug dealer. You're also not paying because you'd rather spend all your money on alcohol from a shop because it's legal and regulated. And you'll get drugs on layaway and then not paying back and then get beaten up. And then they'd come knocking on my door asking for cans of beans and shit or money and stuff. It's like, fuck off. You get paid the same shitty fucking doll that I do because now you have an address. You're on a benefit system, which is in place. A welfare yeah, you, system that you, is in yeah. place. Your country's, your country's medical, national health care system has been undermined by like Th Thatcherism, then Tony Blair really. No, it's not. It's the uh, people who lot of... use it. It's the people who take advantage of it. That's the thing. There are so many people taking advantage of that system. If you go into any of the fucking hospitals in the day, the massive majority of the people in there are just junkies. That's it. They're junkies. They're just fucking out of it. It, it. You'll have a few people who may go in with broken legs. Usually when you have people going in, it's on the Fridays and Saturdays when people go out and get wasted and beat the shit out of each other in the streets. And then they all end up in fucking okay, but... hospital because they're kicking the shit out of each other. Yeah, but do you realize how nightmarish it is to uh, Tonka? Do you have health insurance? You kind of have to. If it's not, if it's not too personal. <laughs> no, that's. Do you have health insurance? Yeah. yeah it's just, you you kind you, you kind of it... have to in order to function. Right, but I'm just saying, like do you, you real. I mean, again, I, I don't. I, I get my health insurance through a union, so I, I pay forty you, bucks a month. Then, when you, and when you need it, but I know that, like, service. when you. <laughs> That's the difference. No, but again, I'm getting it. I'm getting. Service. I'm getting. I'm getting it through collectivism because I get it through a, a labor union. But it, it, Tonka, if you're buying health insurance on the private market, I know this because my dad's been going through this. Like, it's got a. It's like a second rent. No, all right, yeah, it's not cheap. But again, uh, this goes to another print. Uh, a principle that probably doesn't come in line with something people like to talk about when it comes to health and dealing with people's lives, but you get what you pay for in a lot of cases. Yeah, but here's 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 what's sort of perplexing to me, and I understand that I understand that the NHS could use some work. I get that. I understand that just because something is nationalized doesn't mean necessarily that it's an absolute good. In the states, the system for healthcare is nightmarishly privatized. And it's only really being held up by the extent to which I think, what is it? I think 35 or 40% of our health care is, is public health care. And at this point, that's holding up all of the insurance premiums and stuff of the people that, that come into um, the system. So, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine being under British or Canadian health care and looking at America and going, man, I really want to pay $1,800 a month for uh, oh, you know man. basic coverage. Well, it's... <laughs> Uh, here's the other thing again, like you could get up there with the insurance that they hand out to you through a lot of these <laughs> different, um, deals that are cut through unions, uh, yeah. even, you know, like, yeah, even, uh, like in Canada where, you know, it's just, this is how they do business and how they do things as far as healthcare goes. Yeah. You will get better insurance or you will get better healthcare depending on what you pay and in, pay into it in a lot of cases. And yeah, that, that sounds cruel. But when you look at something like Canada, it the lines to get into an ER are nightmarish. Uh, the the wait list to get shit, to get shit rolling on something that in in the states it would not take that long. It's just ridiculously long. There's there are drawbacks to things, but when you look at when you look at something like communism, it's very hard to start something from communism and build it the fuck up 
All right, well, communism is, gener is generally, sorry, ge communism is generally a system that forms out of the ashes of capitalism. You know what I mean? Like, I that's just kind of people... The chat, the chat like asking, it's not working. You pull the, the you... chat is confused by your 1800 a month, by the way. People are asking if you've got AIDS. Mine, like, mine is an 1800 a month. <laughs> no, no, no. no, 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 no that is him giving an extreme example. That was on him. Like, I, I'm rarely, no, my, ever, my, I'm yeah. rarely ever ill. So it's one of those things that, like, uh, and I, I think there's a, there's a, someone told me there's a, a pay, get pay and go service to an extent where if you go there, like, I don't mind sitting there and paying, like, a chunk of cash when I'm going to need it, like, sort of thing to pay for decent service to an extent. I don't have, yeah. and that's the thing is by putting it to one side, you have that decent service set aside. You don't have that in the UK. Every motherfucker gets the same shitty service, and it's really bad. No matter what, how much money, like, and I can be a taxpayer trying to get back into work because I need to fucking pay my bills and shit, and I'm out of work mm -hmm. for ages, and it, and it just fucks you over completely. It fucks over the company as well. Looks bad on you. You've got to take time off because the doctor's not going to be there for three weeks because he's getting your x-ray. Where is he? Mars? Like, he's, I swear down, people are there for ages waiting to get out of the fucking hospital in, in, in these cases, and it's just ridiculous.